Hello, how are you guys doing? I hope that you guys are having a wonderful day wherever you are located in the world, morning, afternoon, evening. I hope that you guys are safe and that you know that you are blessed in the Hamashiach and that Yahuwah got you. Okay, I want to come to you because I want to talk about something. I have spoken on it before, but I think that I need to clarify and expound on it maybe just a little bit more i want to talk to my my israelite brothers and sisters shalom in the name of yahushua hamashiach i just want to say that i'm so glad and honored that the most high has allowed me <clears throat> excuse me and showed me to the truth of who we are as a people and that Yahuwah trusts this truth with us, this treasure, this gem of knowledge with us. Um, I think it's a a wonderful thing. It's a glorious thing. Um, And once you come into the knowledge of who you are, I'm talking to my people now, once you come into the knowledge of who you are, that we are the chosen people. We are the Israel, okay? Once you come into that knowledge, there is a profound awakening that that is inevitable. It has to happen. It's it's a natural, supernatural result of finding out who you are. And so a lot of times, I think what happens is once we find out who we are, um, some of us, not all of us, some of us, we tend to get really defensive and sometimes combative even and argumentative over this truth. It's like we are on this mission. We're just overwhelmed with this zeal, right? We're overwhelmed with this zeal to want the whole world to know and to accept this truth. We want to just uncover the the lies that the enemy has sown throughout history and try to hide who we are as a people, try to hide who the true Ecclesia is, try to hide who Yahuwah really is and who his chosen people really are. It just changes in our whole perspective and we want everybody to know. We want everybody to receive this truth. We become zealous sometimes overzealous even about spreading this truth. And we want everybody, our family, our friends, people, Gentiles, Edomites, whoever, we want everybody to know this. And it's nothing wrong with that. But we have to be mindful and careful with how we um, present this truth. I find it very disturbing that there has been a trend in our community, in the Israelite community, where we we debate, we want to debate the truth. We want to debate and argue and beat this truth over people's heads. Don't you know you should know this truth by now? Just knocking them aside the head with it. You know, and and I thought that maybe it was just a trend. And as you know, trends come and trends go. And I thought it would be temporary. I I thought maybe it's a seasonal thing. Maybe um, I'm not sure where that comes from. The the, the tendency to want to argue and debate the truth. And I'm I'm seeing that that's not the case. It's not a seasonal thing. It's not trending, um, but it's it seems like it's getting worse and worse in our communities. And I want to address it, hopefully to try to share some wisdom with my brothers and sisters in how to present truth. You can take it or you can leave it. Because I understand that there are a lot of people in our community, um, especially the brothers. Some brothers have a hard time receiving anything from sisters because, you know, 
We don't know anything. We don't hear from the Most High. We don't know how to rightfully divide the word. We, we're we just idiots in the rock. We don't ever hear from the Most High. Imagine that. But the Most High is proving that that is false. And if you will sit back and allow yourself the honor to be able to have an ear to hear what the Ruach HaKodesh is saying to his people, to Israel, it may help you learn how to win souls. See, the the problem with debating is that debating is not a fruit of the Spirit. It's not a fruit of the Ruach. And the fruit of debate, the fruit of argument, is never good fruit. It always brings forth rotten fruit. If we look in the word, okay, the word for debate, let's go to Isaiah 58 and 4 that's talking about fasting. That's the fasting prayer, the fasting chapter. This is where the Ruach teaches us how to fast, how to have an effective fast, and how to effectively pray while you're fasting. Isaiah 58 and 4 reads, certainly you fast for strife and debate to strike with the fist of wickedness. You do not fast as you do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. You know, the motive behind everything that we do is just as important as what we do. And I find that a lot of people perform a lot of good works even among Israel, we perform a lot of good works. We wear the right clothes. We wear the fringes. We cover up our head. We wear the shawls, what have you. I don't, but some people in the, in the Israel-like community does those things. We fast. We pray. We honor the Sabbath. Hmm. We celebrate the holy days and and feasts and festivals and we don't celebrate the holidays. We do all these good works and righteous works and we debate about whether we should or whether we shouldn't or whether other people should or whether other people shouldn't. And we strike up arguments over these good works that we perform. But here, debate and strife go hand in hand. The word that's used the Hebrew word that's used for debate in that particular scripture is is masal, and it's spelled M-A-S-S-A. And it literally means contention, strife, debate, to strive and to contend. Now, I know that the word says we are to contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Let's look at that scripture. Let's look at that because I think a lot of times we think that our it's our job to make people believe the word and that's not the case. You know, there's this brother on here on YouTube. His YouTube channel is staying focused for Jesus. Um, brother King says something powerful and I've never heard it presented that way, but it's true. The truth is not debated. It's proclaimed. We don't have to debate the truth. The truth is very powerful in and of itself. If we just tell the truth, if we just share the truth, the truth is able to fight for itself. We don't have to beat people over the head with the truth in order to for them to receive it. All we have to do is present the truth. The word says that you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Do you see that? The the truth does the work for you. The truth makes us free. We don't make us free. The truth, knowing the truth makes us free. That's how powerful truth is. Truth fights for itself. We don't need to put up dukes and say we're fighting for the truth. We're contending for the faith. We don't need to do that. That is not what that is. That is not what that means. But a lot of people think that that it is our job to fight with this. 
and this. And that's not, that's not what we're supposed to be doing. Give me one moment here. The Greek word that's used in Jude 1 and 3 in the scripture that says to contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. It's a long E word. Epagonid Zamai. And I'm not pronouncing it correctly. So uh, my apologies ahead of time. And it does mean to contend. And that's the only scripture that uses that version of contend. It's a different word than contend that is used in Isaiah 58 in the fasting chapter, okay? See, a lot of times we think that our fight is natural. So we use natural weapons and natural means, fists, guns, our tongue. We use natural weapons to fight a supernatural spiritual battle. And that's not what we're called to do. The word says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through Yah to the pulling down of strongholds. Contend in the in the Oxford Dictionary means to assert something as a position in an argument. You could present your case. I've had to represent myself in a court of law. And in a court of law, you cannot, you could present your, your position, you could present your case, you could present your evidence, but there is a way in which you do it. In a court of law, you can't get up in people's face and argue and fight and be disrespectful, which is what I find a lot of our Israelite brothers and some sisters are guilty of, mostly brothers. Because the ladies, for the most part in the Israelite community, are pretty submissive and they're pretty docile. And even if they know it's something else to be true, they're not going to try to argue over a man. But I find that a lot of the brothers in the Israelite community just like to go for the jugular. You go for the Adam apple and, and they, they will bicker and argue and fight. They will get physical. I've heard of cases you have too where the Israelite community goes and pickets. I don't want to say picket, but they will protest in front of church buildings because they believe that the pastor is preaching error. Now, I understand when I was younger and I didn't know any better. I wasn't wise. I did picket a church. You know, I, I was molested and raped by an elder in this church and they still had him in his position they refused to discipline him they refused to sit him down they refused to even believe my allegations i went to the police to press charges and they got their people in leadership in the church to come to me and beg me to not press charges against this elder for what he had done to me um so, you know, I was young, I was upset, I was angry because I felt like no one was really hearing me and listening to my concerns because I, I felt like I was not the only one that he was doing this to. And so I went in front of the church and picketed and, you know, I had my poster up and I was loud, believe it or not. And I was like telling people, don't go to this church. They're doing this, they're doing that. And guess what? It did not stop people from going to the church. The church is still open to this day. This was like 20, at least 20 years ago, if not more. But presenting truth in that way and being uncivil and argumentative and even disrespectful and calling people names, um, trying to physically stop people from having a belief system or following what they believe to be true, never, ever, ever works. They're going to still do what they want to do. They're going to still believe what they want to believe. The word says that unless the Ruach draws a man, 
or a woman. They're not going to they're not going to be drawn to the truth unless the Ruach HaKadosh draws them to the truth. All you can do is present the truth. Here's truth. Boom. Let truth do the work for you. You don't have to call people names. You don't have to pick at their church. You don't have to go in front of their church. There was an instance where this Israelite community picketed or whatever. They was in front of the church and they was they was just being so confrontational that the police had to get involved. People were aware, arrested and the judge issued a restraining order against the Israelite community. They could not go within a certain amount of yards or feet on the church property or they're going to jail. Now they're going to say, oh, we, we were persecuted for the truth. No, you weren't persecuted for the truth. You were <laughs> reprimanded and disciplined because you pra- you did not practice wisdom. And it cost you your witness that there's nobody in that church that's going to listen to anybody in the Israelite community now. Why? Because in their minds, they're going to be, they're going to view them as combative, argumentative, disrespectful, uncivil, and unlawful. You know, I don't understand why so many people in our in the Israelite community are so divisive like that. Because this is the time where we need to stick together. I'm not saying stick together with somebody who's in error. If you find a brother, the word says, if a brother is overtaken in a fault, you who are spiritual, not you who are right, not a you who practice all of the lawful things in the Israelite community, not you who wear fringes, not you who knows Hebrew, not you who wears your hair covering just right, but you who are spiritual. You are to restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. The the word gives us instruction on how to restore people. The word gives us instruction on how to teach people. In a combative, hostile, argumentative environment, when you're calling people names, when you're ostracizing them, when you're singling them out, when you're creating all of these videos to combat what they're saying and making them feel like this, and you're going back and forth tit for tat with the very people who you're supposed to be called to minister to and convert, they're never going to receive what it is that you're trying to teach. Because in the teaching environment, what classroom setting have you ever known the teacher to curse out the student because they did not see, they did not understand a lesson? Or no matter how many times the teacher tried to explain the lesson to that one student that just wasn't getting it in the classroom, that's what teacher do you know cusses out the student because they don't understand? They don't have the revelation. They don't get it. They can't see it. Maybe that student needs to be uh, placed in another classroom setting. Maybe there's another teacher that can break down the lesson to that student in a way that they can receive it and understand it. It's not your job to tear down people who don't see what you see or don't know what you know. And this is very, very prevalent in our community because you may have some knowledge about something that somebody else doesn't. You find it. You find that as a reason to tear down your brother, to tear down your sister, because they don't have the knowledge that you have. Or maybe they're not, they have not been exposed to the revelation and the wisdom that you have. If you are truly wise, the word says he that wins souls is wise. If you're truly wise, you're not going to take an opportunity to tear down someone that doesn't know what you know. You're going to make that a teachable moment. You're going to break it down in a way that they can understand. And if if they can't understand it, no matter how you've broken it down, then you need to refer them to somebody else that may be able to break it down in a manner that they understand and can receive. Stop trying to win an argument and win the soul. Stop trying to win the argument. Win the soul. Every person that you try to teach is a soul that the Most High loves. 
he wants, he, it's his desire that all will come to repentance. But they're not going to come to repentance if you're calling them names. They're not going to come to repentance if, you, if you're if you belittling them and calling them dumb and stupid. If you're bashing them on social media and on YouTube. While that soul is still living, there is yet hope for that soul. And it all boils down to, do you really love souls like that? Do you really care about the souls of those who are deceived, those who are lost, those who are bound, those who don't know? If you really love those souls, you can't debate. You don't need to debate. Debate is a fruit, it is a work of the flesh. Debate is rooted out of pride. When someone d- decides they want to argue and debate with you, it is rooted in, I know better than you. I'm better than you are because I know more than you are. Pride. And pride is another work of the flesh. Stop trying to be right. Stop trying to argue your point. Present the truth. The word says whether they hear Or whether they forbear. That means if they decide to ignore the truth. They're not ignoring you. They're not rejecting you. They're rejecting the truth. That is from the most high. And they will have to stand before the most high. If they leave here before accepting truth. And walking in that truth. And become born again. But that. The results is not your responsibility. You're only responsible to present the truth. You're only responsible to release the word that Yah has said you are supposed to release. Whether they listen or whether they ignore, it's not on you. That's on them. The ground that you sow the seed on and in, it's not up to you to, to, to toil and till the ground. No, 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 no. You just plant the seed and water the seed. That's your only responsibility. Present the truth. Water the truth with the washing of the water of the word of the Most High. See how that works? The teachers that have the most success are the teachers that are patient. The teachers that care about what happens to that student. If all you care about is being right, you don't love the soul. You will have to answer to the Most High if their their blood is shed because then their blood will be on your hands because instead of winning the soul, you were trying to win the argument. And in our community, that needs to stop. Because the debate fosters and grows division. And this is not the time for us to be divided, Israel. This is not the time for us to be divided. This is the time where we we need to cleave to one another. We need to unite. And we need to love one another like we've never cleave and unite and love each other before. We need to stick together. We need to love one another. We need to teach one another in patience and in love. We need to come to people in a spirit, in a rock of meekness and restore those who have fallen. Lest we ourselves be tempted. It's time Israel for us to unite. It's time for us to unite, lock arms, Have private teaching sessions instead of public bashing sessions with people. Have private deliverance sessions instead of public posts to humiliate people. Instead of gossip sessions. It's time, Israel. It's time. You guys be blessed in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach.